How is it going, everyone? It's Lunar Wolf back at you with some more surgery games. But this time, we're not going to be doing dentistry. We're going to be doing optometry. I think that's how it's said. Of course, I already know I'm a real doctor, of course. I'm a professional optometrist as well as a professional dentist. So we will begin with uh, cataract surgery. Hello, and welcome to Surgery Squad's Cataract Surgery. I'm Dr. Susie, and I'll be guiding you through this procedure today. A cataract is a clouding of the lens inside the eye. The lens is located behind the pupil and focuses light on the retina. A cataract causes loss of vision that can't be corrected with glasses, contact lenses, or even LASIK, so it must be surgically removed. We are going to remove the clouded lens and replace it with a new one called an intraocular lens, or IOL. The surgery takes about an hour and can be done on an outpatient basis. Today, our patient oh, is God, a 66-year-old woman who has noticed an increased blurriness in her vision. You've suddenly well become an old woman. Night vision. She saw her eye professional and she detected cataracts and recommended her to us for surgery. Let's begin. First, we need to administer a relaxing sedative intravenously. This will make our patient drowsy. Let's just but wipe not off the skin. Alright, we'll just jab this needle right in here. She's gotta get her fix. But flop. Oh, you can see the needle in there and everything. Uh that's cool. Not if you're squeamish with needles though, of course. Just prior to surgery, additional drops of anesthetic are applied. Of course, let's uh, put this in the other eye as well, because uh, she doesn't need to be uh, seeing anything. We'll use a device called a speculum to hold the eye open wide during the procedure. Place the speculum for me, please. Oh, God. This is what, like, torture move like torture scenes have like they just have those eye things that hold your eyes open while you're forced to watch some horrific thing uh let's torture karen we for a while the surgery with a small painless initial side eyes incision. moving and everything this is called a limbo corneal incision it's done by making a small cut in the limbus with a crescent knife i, I already knew this miss susie you don't need to tell me can we just, like, scrape some of this out? Just, like, tsh, tsh, tsh. We can give her... We can, uh, also, uh, use this scraper to, a uh, do her eyelashes. She said she wanted about two inches off each, uh, eyelash. Okay, let's just stab this... Or stab her in the eye. Next, we use oh. the crescent knife to make a corneal tunnel into the interior chamber of the eye. Of course, of course. Let's just tch, 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 and boop. Ah. Uh. A thick, transparent viscoelastic fluid is injected to fill the space between the cataract and the delicate underside of the clear cornea in front of it. Of course. This is done to keep the cornea from collapsing during the procedure. Help me out and inject the fluid into our patient's eye. Where should I inject it? Should I inject it into the white part? Just imagine, just an eye full of this. Now we need to make a 2.85 millimeter wide incision at the edge of the cornea for the cataract removal. I can't this imagine dealing dealing with this. Diamond scalpel. Even if my vision was blurry, I would not be able to watch this. I would just not be able to deal with this happening. I would keep the cataracts. Ah, uh, we're holding her eye. Ah, uh, I'm a squeamish. A bent needle is inserted into the incision and used to poke a hole into the clear sac that holds the lens with the cataract. All right, let's just poke her in the eye. 
Let's scrape that eye booger out there. Ah, it's stuck in. Oh well. We'll just deal with it. The needle is dragged to cut a line in the sack. With the incision made, we'll insert the forceps to grab the torn sack and tear a circle out of it. Just to rip this out. Oh, I was right. Now you will need to insert the I am. I'm a doctor. To the incision to separate the lens from the capsule. What was that, Susie? Uh, I already know how to do this surgery. You don't need to tell me. All right. This Shove the needle the in. This capsule to float so that it can be rotated during the next step. We'll now perform phaco emulsification, or phaco. This is done by using ultrasound to break up the affected lens so it can be removed from the eye. To do this, we pulse and drag the device to cut across the cataracted lens. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. We repeat the phaco from the other direction to create four pieces. Right. The eye only looks orange because it's reflecting our surgical lights. The oh. phaco is then used to suction out the pieces of the old lens. Um, I don't believe so, dearie. That I'll was you to remove very the far off. The soft cataract material out of the eye, leaving behind the clear, empty lens capsule. My God, you shoved her this like all the way into the white part of her eye. My God, you sucked out part of her white, her eye whites. When you're done, what? inject more viscoelastic fluid into the lens capsule to keep it from collapsing. Of course, Susie, I know this. I'm a professional optometrist, as well as a dentist, and a doctor. The flexible intraocular lens is rolled up for insertion by the assistant and placed in a soft tube. The IOL is now injected through a tube into the vacant lens capsule. My, this... This is probably something that has had to have been thought so much and so hard on. And now we have the ability to just replace someone's lenses in their eye. Science is amazing sometimes. Uh... If not a little bit gross. A probe is used to spin the lens into place. Let's just shove this in her eye. The thick fluid we added to the eye will need to be removed, and any remaining microscopic cataract fragments should be rinsed out as well. The incisions in the eye are generally self-sealing. Very rarely that we need to add a suture to close the incision. In our patient's case, we don't need any sutures. The lens is now in place. Our patient will need someone to drive her home after cataract surgery. And she shouldn't drive until she's cleared at her follow-up appointment tomorrow. How many people ignore this and just drive home anyways? It's like, I may be a pirate, but I'm going to drive myself home, dang it. Crashes Hello. into a wall. We'll prescribe medicated eye drops to use several times each day for a few weeks after the cataract surgery. And she'll need to wear a protective eye shield while sleeping or napping for about a week after surgery. A special pair of post-op sunglasses will also need... Oh, she gets cool sunglasses. sunglasses. I'm the doctor. Why don't I get cool recovers. sunglasses? Oh, wait. I've you already got cool sunglasses. Today, surgeon. While you're here... Try your hand at one of our other surgeries here at SurgerySquad.com. How to cook a turkey? That's a surgery? Huh. Well, I'll see you in the next, uh, surgery. And here we are. In for retinal detachment surgery. God, that eye looks so horrifically bad. Uh... I have a like thing about not touching my eyes. Like I cannot stand to watch people do this, but somehow it doesn't phase me while I'm playing the game.
Luckily. Rip. Hello, and welcome to Surgery Squad's Retinal Detachment Surgery. I'm Dr. Jeff, and I will be guiding you through this procedure today. The retina is located in the back of your eye. When we see, light enters the eye. It is focused onto the retina, which acts like the film in a camera, feeding information to the optic nerve, allowing you to see. As you get older, the vitriol fluid, which is the gel in your eye, can contract, pulling the retina away from the eye. This contraction can cause a small tear in the retina, allowing the oh. fluid to seep behind the retina, detaching it from the back of the eye. This can cause loss of vision. A retinal detachment is a very serious ailment that must be dealt with as soon as possible after discovery. Symptoms that you may experience with a detached retina include seeing floaters or frequent flashes of light, shadows appearing in your peripheral or side vision, a gray curtain moving across your field of vision, or a sudden decrease in your vision. Again, well, I think this one should be obvious. Like, just, you get a tear in your retina, just can't see nothing out of your eye, like, huh, I wonder what I have. I mean, it's probably not going to be much else than that. I mean, from what I know, I've never heard of something that absolutely destroys your vision other than cataracts and this. So it should be fine. If you experience any That's of my symptoms, professional optometrist your eye doctor immediately. Opinion. Today, we're going to perform a retinal reattachment called a pneumatic retinopesky. The surgery takes about an hour and can be done on an outpatient basis. Of course, I know all Our this. Our patient today is a 30-year-old man who recently noticed flashes in his vision. His ophthalmologist dilated the eye and detected a retinal tear and a detachment. He recommended immediate surgery to limit additional loss of vision. Let's begin. Let's. First, we need to administer a relaxing sedative intravenously. This will make our patient drowsy, but not put him to sleep. Can you place the needle for me? Ah, uh, he needs his fix. Oh, well. What can you do? Straight in, straight out. Kind of like sex. If you're not very good at it, anyways. Just prior to surgery, additional drops of anesthetic are applied. Oh, that's probably not friend family friendly. I probably shouldn't say that. But oh well, I already said it. We'll use a device called a speculum to hold the eye open wide during the procedure. Yep, of place course. Place a speculum for me, please. Let's place our torture device. Just... Now that the patient is anesthetized, we insert a syringe into the eye. I like how we're just using pictures for this one. A one, a two, a uh, stab the eye. Now we inject an air bubble into the vitriol fluid. As the bubble expands, it pushes the retina back against the wall of the eye. With the retina back in place, we can now seal the tear using a freezing probe. The probe is touched to the outside of the eye where the tear is. This a freezes freezing the tear back probe? in place. It may take several touches depending on the size of the tear. My god, we have something called a freezing probe? I mean, I, I of course knew this as a professional optometrist performing this surgery. But still, that is impressive. Science has come a long way. Let's just, uh... The tear is now repaired. The needle insertion will heal quickly. Can you remove the speculum? Well, that's all. This wasn't very eventful. Our patient needs someone to drive him home after the surgery, and he shouldn't drive until he regains sight in the eye. We'll prescribe medication. Oh, come on now. He can just drive. He'll just have wear an eye patch, and he'll just be like, I really turning his head really fast. Just like, I can see. I just got to turn my head back and forth really fast. Crashes into a wall in the parking lot of the hospital, of course. Drops to use several times each day for a few weeks after the surgery. And he'll need to wear a protective eye shield while sleeping or napping for about a week after surgery. 
A special pair of post-op sunglasses also need to be worn to protect his eye from sunlight and other bright light as his eye recovers. However, the biggest part of the recovery is head positioning. The bubble floats to the top of the eye, so the head must be positioned to keep the bubble against the detached portion of the eye. This means the patient must keep his head facing down, or the position indicated by his surgeon, for at least a week. Sight oh, returns yeah. slowly to the eye over several months as the bubble must dissolve and be replaced by vitriol fluid. However, once the bubble dissolves, vision is usually restored to close to the previous level. You did a great job today, surgeon. While you're here, try one of our other surgeries here at SurgerySquad.com. Well... Okay, I was about to say something I really shouldn't have. But I'll probably become a dentist just for this one. Again. What do I mean become? I'm already. But I'll see you in our next surgery. And here we are. With LASIK eye surgery. Totally didn't just click that. No, I found it. Searched far and wide for it. But let's get into it. Welcome to Surgery Squad's virtual LASIK eye surgery. I am Dr. Susie. I'll be guiding you through a LASIK eye procedure today. Okay. LASIK eye surgery reshapes the cornea to provide improved focusing power and reduce a patient's need for glasses or contact lenses. LASIK is performed with a special laser that's used to change the shape of the cornea the part of the eye that controls and focuses the entry of light. By doing so, we can focus the light so that the patient's vision is improved. Our patient's already had her preliminary exam. Her prescription hasn't changed for more than a year, and she has no history of eye disease or injury. This qualifies her as a perfect candidate for the- I'm also supposed to wear glasses. However, I never wear them. So... I'm probably going to be in pretty big trouble once a couple of years are over and if I keep doing this for long. Like a year from now, I'm probably going to have even worse vision than I already do. But, what can we do? Wear our glasses? No. Surgery. We want to make this procedure as pain-free as possible, so we'll use... Why do you want to make it pain-free? I like seeing my uh, patients squirm a little bit. Not too much, of course. Just that little bit of pain. Drops to numb the eye. Can you place a few drops into her eyes? Alright, here's a couple. Here's a couple more. Even with the numbing drops, it's possible that the patient can feel pressure and mild discomfort but they do help with most or all the pain. Debris can complicate the procedure, so we need to make sure that the area around the eye is clean. Of course. Now that the area around the eye is clean. However, because our patient is wearing so much heavy mascara and eyeshadow, we'll probably have some problems with the surgery, of course. However, as a professional optometrist, I will, of course, be able to get through the surgery problem-free. We'll use a device called a speculum to hold the eyelid open wide. Oh, we're getting the torture devices out. So let's get out. that speculum over the eye. If the patient was allowed to blink, we might cut or burn the wrong area. At this point, we'll also mark the cornea with a water-soluble ink to guide replacement of the flap. Now we place a suction ring over the eye. Oh. Uh, you know, I, I, I was... I made the joke about the eye suction thing in the last video. Didn't actually think I would ever get to do this, but here we are. The ring sucks the cornea upward, making it easier to cut. The patient's vision will likely dim and blur while the suction ring is attached. Uh, For this next step, we're going to slice open a flap on the cornea. Uh, to make the corneal flap, we use a mechanical microkeratome. This is a fancy name for a blade device that's attached to the suction ring. We slide it across uh, and it cuts the top 20% of the cornea. Anybody want a slice of eye? 
I've heard it's delicious delicacy in some places. It's not very filling, but I guess if it's what you want. Here we go. Slide the microkeratome along the track to create a thin flap in the corneal. With the corneal flap cut, we remove the microkeratome and suction ring and then peel back the corneal flap to expose the middle part of the cornea. Uh, I let go. This is the part we'll reshape Ow. with a laser. Just magically the computer teleported. controlled laser is positioned over the eye. By analyzing our patient's data, we've pre-programmed the laser to tell it how much corneal tissue to remove. A flip of the switch to fire up the laser and the reshaping process is underway. Pulses from the laser will correct the shape of the cornea in less than 60 seconds. It's a slight clicking sound and you might notice a faint smell Sorry. similar of burning hair. Track. And that's it. Please fold the corneal flap back into the original position. Nicely done. I like how it While teleports. you were working, I went ahead and took care of the other eye. We will observe our patient for several minutes to assure the corneas bond correctly. The cornea is quite amazing in this respect. It will be bonded back to each eye in moments. Even with the corneal flap bonded back in place, the cornea is still vulnerable and could dislodge if the patient isn't careful. That's why we put a clear protective shield over each eye. This keeps the patient from bumping or rubbing her eyes. The patient will notice the improved vision immediately or as soon as the numbing drops wear off. She may now be driven home as she won't be able to drive for a day or two. She'll come back within the next 48 hours so we can remove the eye shields, test her vision, and examine her eyes to make sure everything is healing up nicely. And there you have it, another successful surgery. You can see more of my superior surgical technique and my other procedures here on SurgerySquad.com. And that's all I have time for today. That's all our surgeries. So, as this professional optometrist tells you goodbye, I hope that you'll leave a like if you liked the video and subscribe if you liked my channel. See you in the next video. Bye, guys.